Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another modern gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a banned Soul Herder deck, a creature deck full of creatures with enter battlefield abilities, as well as four copies of Soul Herder, which is kind of our build around card in a deck. Three mana for a 1 1 spirit that says whenever a creature is exiled from the battlefield, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Soul Herder. And more importantly, at the beginning of your end step, you may exile another target creature you control and return it to the battlefield. So essentially flicker one of our creatures. And since most of our creatures have some sweet enter battlefield ability, we can gain an incremental advantage with a soul herder in play. So let's take a look at our entire deck, starting out with our one drops, where we have the full four copies of Path to Exile as a nice cheap removal spell. Also synergizes with soul herder, since if we exile a creature with Path to Exile, the soul herder will pick up a plus one plus one counter. Then we also have the full four copies of Ephemerates, a new card from Modern Horizons, much like Soul Herder, which is also great alongside creatures with enter battlefield abilities, because for one mana at instant speed we can exile another creature we control and return it to the battlefield right away, so flicker one of our creatures. And Ephemerate also has a rebound, so when we cast this from our hand we can exile it after it resolves, and at the beginning of our next upkeep we can cast this card from exile without paying its mana cost, so we get access to it twice. So if we can flicker something useful then we can gain a lot of advantage from just a single ephemerate for one mana. And then at two mana we've got a whole bunch of creatures that essentially draw a card when they enter the battlefield. Four copies of Ice Fang Quaddle, two mana for a 1-1 one, one snow creature with flash and flying, draws a card when it enters the battlefield, and also has a death touch as long as we control at least three other snow permanents, which is why we have all these snow covered basics in our mana base. Then we've got four copies of Wall of Blossoms, two mana 0-4 Defender that draws a card, four copies of Coiling Oracle, which is a 2 mana 1-1, one, one, that when it enters the battlefield we reveal the top card of our library, if it's a land card it goes straight onto the battlefield, and otherwise it goes into our hand, so even better than drawing a card. And finally we have a 1-off copy of Watcher for Tomorrow, 2 mana for a 2-1 creature with Hideaway, used to seeing this ability on lands, but appearing on a creature here, meaning that this creature enters the battlefield tapped, and when it does, we get to look at the top 4 cards of our library, exile one of them face down, and the rest goes on the bottom, and when the Watcher for Tomorrow leaves the battlefield, we can put the exiled card into his owner's hand, giving us a bit of card selection. Then at 3 mana, of course, we've got our full playset of Soul Herder, providing a ton of advantage, as well as a full playset of Force of Negation, which technically costs 3 mana, but often we can also play for free. If it's not our turn, we can exile a blue card from our hand, rather than pay Force of Negation's mana cost. And then we get to counter target non-creature spell and exile it instead of putting it in the graveyard. So this gives us some much needed interaction, since our deck is very good at gaining card advantage through all the center battlefield abilities, ephemerates and soul herders, but we also need to be able to interact with our opponent a little bit, so that's where these force of negations come in handy, and we have plenty of blue cards to exile so we don't have to pay the mana cost if we don't want to. Next up we have 3 copies of Eternal Witness, which does a ton of work in this deck, 3 mana for a 2-1 creature, that when it enters the battlefield lets us return any card from our graveyard back to our hand, so it can return fetch lands, path to exiles, great with ephemerate, since if we can get back an ephemerate and cast it right away on Eternal Witness, we can get back even more cards from the graveyard, so overall provides a ton of advantage. Then we also have 2 copies of Deputy of Detention, giving us some more interaction, can exile an opposing non-land permanent when it enters the battlefield, until the deputy leaves the battlefield, also helps us grow the Soul Herder whenever we exile something. Then at 4 mana we've got a 1-off copy of Jason Mind Sculptor, giving us even more card advantage in a form that's not a creature, so a bit more difficult for the opponent to interact with perhaps. A 1-off copy of Avancer Shaper Savant, which also gives us access to some more interaction. 4 mana for a 2-2 creature with Flash, and when Avancer enters the battlefield we can return target spell or permanent to its owner's hand, so we can use it as a counter spell or as a bound spell. And then last but not least, a one-off copy of Muldrifter, which can draw us two cards when it enters the battlefield, and also has Evoke, so we can also evoke Muldrifter, and before we have to sacrifice it, we can flicker it with Ephemerate, so it returns to the battlefield and draws us even more cards, and then we'll stay in play. So just overall a ton of value to be gained with Muldrifter, and then a one-off copy of Time Warp, which lets us take an extra turn, and we can take infinite turns if we can combine a Time Warp with Eternal Witness and Soul Herder, flickering Eternal Witness, getting back Time Warp from the graveyard, to essentially take all the turns. Then our mana base, we've got a lot of snow-covered basics to enable the Death Touch on the Quaddle, so we've got three snow-covered islands, two snow-covered plains, two snow-covered forests, and since we're playing so many basics and ways to fetch up basics, we also have two copies of Prairie Stream instead of the typical Shocklands, 
and a one-off copy of Canopy Vista, which will come into play untapped, as long as we control at least two basic lands, and then a whole bunch of fetch lands, the new Prismatic Vista, which can fetch all of the basics, then three Windswept Heath, four Misty Rainforests, and two Flooded Strands. Then quickly going over the sideboard, we've got some more counter spells in the form of Disdainful Stroke against expensive spells, a one-off rejection against the Colorless decks, two Celestial Purges to exile Red or Black Permanence, so it shines against the Jun deck, for example, where we can exile both of the Planeswalkers, Damping Sphere against Tron and Storm combo decks, two Rest in Pieces against Graveyard decks, two Stony Silences against Artifact-based decks, two Knights of Autumn as a pretty versatile card that can gain life against the Burn decks or destroy Artifacts and Enchantments. Then we've got a one-off Cataclysmic Gearhulk, which is a pretty interesting one. So 5 mana for a 4-5 with Vigilance, and when the Cataclysmic Gearhulk enters the battlefield, each player chooses an artifact, a creature, an enchantment, and a planeswalker from among the non-land permanents that they control, and then sacrifice the rest, meaning that the Gearhulk shines against the go-white creature decks that play many creatures, or some artifact-based decks that put a ton of artifacts in play, where we can force them to only keep a single artifact, and the Gearhulk itself is an artifact, so we can keep... Gearhulk as our artifact of choice and Soul Herder as our creature of choice, for example, and then keep flickering the Gearhulk with the Soul Herder so the opponent can never have more than one creature or more than one artifact in play at the same time. So that's a pretty powerful combination. And then finally, one copy of Thrak Tusk, which is great in the grindy matchups and can also gain life against the burn deck. So that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw. What do we think of this hand? Uh, seems okay. Got Force as Interaction, as well as Deputy, and a Reasonable Curve, facing turn 1 Hedron Crab. So is this some sort of mill deck? So I can Misty, fetch basic forests, and then play Island into Vista. Alright, Hedron Crab targets me, I guess I'll fetch... Although there is a risk of Archive Trap as well. Mills over Path, times 2, and Oracle. And a Thought Scour, targeting me, sure. Don't think I need to force that. Can also force the Archive Trap if it happens in the opponent's turn, but... Let's play the Oracle. Finds Forests. So next turn I can Deputy the Hedron Crab, potentially. Well, if we find an Eternal Witness, we'll have plenty of uh, targets in the graveyard at least. And Glimpse the Unthinkable, do I want to force that one? It's no Archive Trap, but it's pretty close. I would have to exile my Time Warp, which is not a big deal. Yeah, I think I do. Alright, I think I want to get rid of the Hedron Crab as soon as possible, so I should probably do it now. And hit for one. Four mana for Jace, Wielder of Mysteries. Fair enough. And an Ephemerates. Alright, so I guess we'll start pressuring the Jace. It could also Ephemerate targeting the Deputy to switch targets and get rid of the Jace instead. Maybe if that's the way to go. We'll start with Oracle, see what we can find. Another Oracle, so I guess I'll fetch for an island. Play another Oracle. Find a Wall of Blossoms. Yeah, I think I want to get rid of the Jace. Just attack my opponent for two and then Ephemerate uh, Deputy. Does mean they get back the Hedron Crab, but presumably they don't have too many more lands in hand at this point. It's going to be an opt into another crab, into a watery grave. At least it's not a fetch land, so it could be worse. So we're down to 28 cards in library, and 3 mana for a mind funeral. Alright, let's see how many cards they mill. So down to 20 cards. Could get rid of both crabs now, and then attack the jays for 3 by targeting my deputy again. Yeah, maybe that's the play here. 
Fair enough, we'll try. Because double crab is pretty scary. Find eternal witness, that's gotta be good. Of course her opponent could have something like an extirpate or surgical extraction. I guess it would have to be surgical. I can get back ephemerates and then target my witness again. I did exile the time warp sadly, so I wouldn't be able to do the combo here. And then maybe I just get back a soul herder afterwards. So probably start by attacking the J still. Play witness. Get back ephemerates. And then we'll do it now. And get back probably just a soul herder. And say go. So I'm down to 19 cards in library. Jace can mill for another two. Visions of Beyonds can draw them three cards here. So opponent's got plenty of action to work with. Finds another Hedron Crab. Down to 14 cards in library. And a Mesmeric Orb. Ooh, that's bad news. It's gonna mill me for a lot of uh, cards here. Seven this turn. So I'll target Eternal Witness again. Yeah, if only I didn't have to exile my Time Warp, I could have set up a sweet uh, combo. Probably gotta find the other Deputy. Do I have one in the graveyard? There is. So that can get rid of the Mesmeric Orb. Yeah, I'll grab the Deputy. And draw a Prismatic Vista for the turn. Do I even have a Planes left in my deck though? There's the two Planes. So nothing left to really fetch. That's too relevant. Ah, let's play the deputy. Get rid of the orb. And uh, attack the Jace. Now if I get the Soul Herder in play, I can basically get rid of all three crabs by targeting my deputy. Didn't think I even want to play the Wall of Blossoms with six cards left in library. Doesn't really do much. Thought Scour targeting me. Would also love to get back a Force of Negation here, but yeah, one card left, so I don't think this is happening. And a Manic Scribe. Alright, so that should be game. Right, let's move on to sideboarding. So what can I bring in against the mill deck? Not all that much. Stro could be good against Archive Trap. Probably wants Night of Autumn against uh, Mesmeric Orb, maybe Ensnaring Bridge. Rest in peace, nerfs or eternal witness, I don't think I want it, even though it can make it so visions from beyond and other delirium cards don't work. But it's probably too bad, since eternal witness is one of my better cards. And then wall of blossoms is pretty bad, since they're not really attacking me. So that can go. Alright, I think we'll try this. Don't think there's any black permanence that we need to exile with the purge. All the creatures were blue. Could just bring in the Thrak Tusk to have a faster clock but it doesn't seem amazing. Yeah, we'll try this. There's also an argument for boarding in more than uh, 60 cards against the mill deck, but some of our cards are actively bad, like the Wall of Blossoms, and with only 22 lands, we also risk making it more difficult to hit our land drops. Yeah, this hand's not amazing, don't have much interaction, but the Watcher can help us dig pretty deep, especially with the Soul Herder. Probably don't want to fetch in case of Archive Trap. Just play Island for now. They do have the turn one crab. Right, there's time warp. And path exile seems good against the crab. So next turn I can play the soul herder, get access to path. Opponent with an opt. A land for the crab. Start milling us. So that's a Jace. Path and Deputy gone, Thought Scour milling us, Ephemerate and Forest. Alright, let's get in for two. Alright, probably want the Force of Negation. Mind Funeral, bunch more cards milled, 
do need to be careful that uh, all my fetchable targets don't get milled. Ephemerates. Alright, that's pretty good. So I guess I can path the Hedron Crab to grow the Soul Herder 2 here. Attack for 5. And then uh, once I have the Force of Negation in hand, I'll feel safer about uh, fetching into a potential trap here. Get another path. Jace's Phantasm. Yeah, we've got the path for that, so that's fine. Want to fetch any opponent's turn so I can force a potential trap. And then probably just grab... Let's see, do I need more than two blue? Not really. Do I need more than two white? So I guess I'll just get the forest then to enable Death Touch. The only issue with playing Quaddle is that I need to get rid of the Time Warp if I want to force something. Yeah, let's play it anyway. Alright, backup force is good. And then I'll Femorate the Watcher. Get my path right now. And find Eternal Witness. So just need to find a second green source at this point. Canopy Vista will do. And a Windswept Teeth. Alright, now I guess I can't fetch the Canopy Vista anymore. But that's okay. So I'll just attack with both and then Time Warp. Alright, opponent scoops it up. On to game 3. Any changes? So they do have the Jace's Phantasms, but that's fine since we definitely want to keep in path. So I don't think we change much. Just uh, try again. And what about this hand? We've got a turn 2 Quaddle, turn 3 Soul Herder. Not much interaction, no force, no path. But a Jace as well. So it's definitely a powerful hand, plus Witness can maybe get something back from the graveyard. I'll try it. It's gonna be a turn 1 Thought Scour. Alright, probably want to play the forests. And a Jace's Phantasm, that's fine. I guess I can play Watcher over Quaddle for now. Since it's a bit better into a Soul Herder. And could get the path for the Phantasm, could get Force of Negation for potential mill spells. I feel like we can handle the Phantasm with the Quaddle. So I'm just going to grab the Force. Could also get the Ephemerate to dig even deeper, but uh, don't think I need to be too greedy, given that I have a uh, Soul Herder in hand. Alright, there's a Glimpse to enable the Jace's Phantasm. Hits us for 5. And an Ephemerate, that's perfect. So I get to attack for 2. Flash in a Quaddle to ambush the Phantasm, as well as have Ephemerate in case I need access to Force. Thought Scour milling me. And there's a Hedron Crab. And down to 32 cards. And they're gonna play around the Quaddle here. Still gonna play it out. And then Ephemerate the Watcher. I hope they don't have a Fatal Push. Alright, what do I want? So I'm gonna get the Force in hand anyway. Do I get the Path now for the Crab? Seems okay. So I'll uh, target the Watcher for now. Get my Path. Possible they were playing around Force of Negation and are saving the Fatal Push for my turn, where I can't uh, Force for free. And I don't have double blue up. Alright, that works. And probably just want to land here. Let's play Soul Herder. Don't think I'm attacking this turn. Get a Venser. And then in their upkeep, I'll fetch, since now I can force a trap. Whoops, I meant to get the Canopy Vista instead of the Prairie Stream, since now I don't have double green. 
That's okay, and then I'll path the crab, since we still have the phantasm covered with the quaddle. But definitely should have gotten the vista instead of the prior stream to have access to eternal witness mana. The phantasm attacks, happy to trade. And another mind funeral. They want to force some negation it. I don't think I do. Like, there's worse cards they could play, like Mesmeric Orb and Snaring Bridge, maybe. And I'll just keep the force for another mill card once we get closer to dying. Alright, there's a time warp. So now I just need to get the Eternal Witness in play, and we're all set. So let's start by attacking. Play Time Warp, targeting myself. I'll get to Windswept Heath. This Daneful Stroke could be useful too. So let's hit for 6, and then we should kill them next turn. I have Venser, Stroke and Force at the ready to counter any shenanigans, even without going infinite with Time Warp. Yeah, Watcher plus Soul Herder, definitely a very powerful combination. Digs us much deeper than just uh, flickering a Quaddle or a Coiling Oracle. Don't know if it matters, get another Soul Herder. And I'll discard a Quaddle. So we've got 7 power in play, multiple counter spells at the ready. It's gonna be a Damnation. Yeah, I'll use the Disdainful Stroke, and then I still have Force of Negation hardcasts as well here. Jace's Phantasm, that's fine, we can untap and bounce it. I guess I'll go with the Deputy. And attack for 8. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Uh, yeah, this hand's keepable. Could use maybe a path if we're up against a creature deck, but the Quaddle can help there as well as the wall. If we're up against some sort of combo deck, this hand's pretty weak. Then we'll need to find our Force of Negation in game one. Turn one Wooded Foothills gets an Overgrown Tomb, so this could be a Jun deck. And a turn one Thoughtseize. All right. Well, the Jun matchup is interesting. A run and six is very good against us here. So that's a card we don't want to see. But we can definitely outgrind other mid-range decks like Junt. And Path is a nice addition. Probably just get basic island, basic forests. Turn to Tormogoyf. I could path that right now. Could untap and play a wall which can technically still block it. And not ramp my opponent right away. Yeah, I'll just untap for now. Force of Negation could be useful at countering a Planeswalker. And play the wall. And I want to make sure to get the snow covered basics to give the Quaddle Death Touch to block Goyf. It's gonna be a tapped stomping ground. And fatal push. Yeah, I don't think I'm forcing that. There's better targets. Ephemerate's nice. So I can play the Quaddle at instant speed, opponent might still attack if they have instant speed removal, but then I can Ephemerate in response and uh, save my Quaddle and draw an extra card. And do we see a Bloodbraid Elf? We don't. Go if attacks, flashing Quaddle. And I always have the path exile if uh, this fails. If they have two instant speed removal spells, then I'll be forced to force here. All right, perfect. Grim Flare. That's an interesting one. So there's nothing to use a rebound on, but that's okay. We got our value. I could just Jace and bounce the Grim Flare. Um, if my opponent has a Bloodbraid Elf, that would be bad. So I might want to wait a turn so I can have Path up. And then for now, I could just play Coiling Oracle. Find Soul Herder. And I'm probably going to end up pathing the Grim Flare. 
And there's a Blood Braid, Cascade into another Grim Flare. Alright, so we'll have to spend a couple of paths here. Take three. So if I get the planes, I can path end of turn, but then I can't play my Jace. Question is, am I going to play the Jace? The board isn't very stable for Jace yet, but my opponent is empty-handed. I think I prefer playing the Soul Herder, in which case I'm just going to path the Grim Flayer. Opponent gets their last basic, presumably. Alright, Misty means I could still play the Jace anyway, but I think I'm still leaning Soul Herder here. Might as well attack for one. Find a second Soul Herder. Alright, second uh, Blood Braid off the top, that's a good top deck. Find Skullogan's Command, probably gonna have to force that one. And I could deputy both elves. I think that's going to be the play here. And then I can force pitching the Soul Herder. Or I could just pitch the Jace and rely on Soul Herder to get me there. Let's keep the Jace. Opponent has double Blood Braids. Can put me to four. I'll take it. Not going to fetch yet, otherwise I'm in Bolt range. Alright, wall could be good too. Keep up planes in case I draw Ephemerate or Path. Soul Herder gets to be pretty big here, so we're also clocking the opponents. Yeah, I don't think I want to fetch down to 3 and beat that to a Bolt. I'll just uh, say go here. Alright, Quaddle. Although I guess I can flash that one in. Alright, opponent scoops it up. So on to game two against Junt. Definitely want Thrak Tusk. Uh, Celestial Purge is great. And that's about it. Well, most of our cards are pretty decent. The Deputy is not the most reliable removal spell in a matchup. Uh, Venser might not be amazing. And don't know if we need the Time Warp. Seems a bit unnecessary. And then maybe go down to one Deputy. Typically, you don't want uh, Force of Negation against the Junt deck. But in our deck it's a bit different since we can generate so much card advantage and the most problematic cards are some of the non-creature spells like Ren and Six and some of the removal spells. So I think we want to keep the force in this case. Don't think I need rest in peace, it hurts me as much as it hurts the opponents, given the eternal witnesses. Definitely gotta watch out for a potential plague engineer naming Snake since that deals with our Quaddle and the Coiling Oracle. This ends okay though. We were lucky to dodge a Ren and Six in the first game. Inquisition could take the wall, could take a Soul Herder. Takes the wall. Plenty of other two drops that we could potentially find. Eternal Witness is looking good too. I'll just play the Vista for now. Don't want to grab basic planes since we could draw a Coiling Oracle or a Quaddle. So I'll probably just wait until my turn to decide what to fetch. There's a Grim Flare again. I guess maybe I should have considered Rest in Peace since they have both Grim Flayer and Tarmogoyf. So that's a bit different from the typical John deck. Alright, another Witness. So we're a bit overloaded on 3 drops, so that could hurt us. Another Inquisition. Well, they're not going to be happy to see double Witness, but they will get to connect with the Grim Flayer. Takes the Soul Herder. And an Untapped Blood Crypt. For a Collective Brutality, making us discard the Ephemerate here. Fair enough. Still no Delirium for the Grim Flare at least. Hits us for two. Alright, that's on tap. Find another Heath. So I guess I'll play Witness. Grabbing Islands, Forest and then probably Vista. And get back an Ephemerate. It's gonna be Plague Engineer naming Human to kill my Eternal Witness. At least my snakes are safe. So we need some help here. 
Path to Exile would be great. Quaddle, Celestial Purges we brought in would also be decent here. Another Eternal Witness instead. Well, that just dies to the Plague Engineer. Can still get something back, but uh, not uh, the greatest feeling to play it out here. So I guess I'll just play my Soul Herder for now. Could witness back the Wall of Blossoms to just be able to block the Grim Flare for the time being. And it's gonna be a second Plague Engineer, oh boy. This one probably naming Spirit to kill the Soul Herder. Yeah, that's rough. Well, we'll need to find some removal ASAP here. Still no Delirium for Grimflare, but our opponent's keeping cards on top, which is also not a good sign. Uh, yeah, I'll just untap. Coiling Oracle, at least that one doesn't die. Find Squaddle. So they might have some instant speed removal. So it's a little bit awkward that my Windswept Heath can't fetch an island here, because then I won't have the three snow-covered lands required to give the Quaddle Death Touch if I get the Prairie Stream. So that means I either have to just double block the Grim Flare, which is very bad in the face of any instant speed removal, or just take another two. But if I double block I also lose any ephemerate targets, so I think I'll just take it for now. The fact that they didn't attack with the Plague Engineers probably implies that they don't have removal in hand, but uh, even then I would rather play it safe. And a Tarmogoyf. All right, let's uh, Ephemerates. Finds a land, so now I can flash in the Quaddle. All right, there's a Celestial Purge, so that unlocks a few of our cards. And another Ephemerates, so we're making some progress. So I probably want to purge the Engineer naming Human, play Witness, and still have Ephemerate up. Yeah, I think I just get back Purge right now. Already have an Ephemerate in hand, so... Just say go for now. Put and moves to combat, sends in everyone. Alright, so Quaddle goes on Thermogoyf, Witness on Grimflayer. And then I can block the Engineer and Ephemerate the Oracle. If your opponent passes priority, do I want to make a move? I think I am casting the Ephemerate here. It's gonna be a Colgan's command instead. Yeah, that's bad. Gets back the Ooze. But yeah, if I let damage resolve, then I don't have any creatures in play to use my Ephemerate on in the first place. So it would fall pretty far behind, but uh, oh well. So they got an ooze back, they get one more trigger from the Grim Flare since it has Trample and got to hit me for one. So gotta get value from the Witness while we can. And what do I get? I could get Ephemerate, play Ephemerate. And get back the Quaddle. And say go. Another Tarmogoyf, fair enough. So do I just purge the Engineer so I can keep Quaddle for Goyf? I guess so. And then Ephemerate the Witness. Get back, maybe just another Witness. Ooh, Thraktusk, that's spicy. Feels relatively safe to just play Witness for now, get back Ephemerates. Our opponent only a single green, which is why they didn't play the Ooze here. And then just pass a turn. There's the Ooze. Goyf attacks, we'll flash in the Quaddle. Find a Jace. Alright, feels like we're in pretty good shape now. Path to Exile to pick up. Let's just uh, run out to Thraktusk. 
and our opponent packs it in. Just too much value. All right, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play. And don't think I'm keeping a creature loss hand here. All right, we'll try this. A bit land heavy, but don't want to go to five. And then probably an island can go. And then I can fetch up a forest and play turn to Oracle. Let's see what we're up against. Sacred Foundry tapped. Not sure what to make of that. I'll fetch now since I know what I'm going to get and I want to thin out the deck a bit. All right, that's an exciting draw. Find Venser. Blackleaf Cliff, so some sort of Mardu deck. And Dreadbore on the Oracle. So now Soul Herder is no longer an interesting play. Ooh, Force could be good. Just play the wall for now. Dreadhorde Arcanists. Yeah, that resolves. We'll thin out the deck and get probably a Canopy Vista. All right, Quaddle. So now I guess I want to play the Windswept Teeth so I can have access to another Snow-Covered Land to give this Death Touch potentially. Could also play the Soul Herder. If they have a Lightning Bolt, they can kill it. I'll just play it slow here. Maybe make them waste some removal spells on the Quaddle instead. Possible I should have sequenced my fetch lands differently, so I could potentially fetch Basic Island here. No attacks from the Arcanists. Alright, still gonna flash in the Quaddle. Fine Plains. So I guess now I'm okay fetching again to thin out the deck a bit and get Prairie Stream. Potential reason to hold the fetches is if we top deck Jace, but I think if we top deck Jace we'll be doing just fine. Moldrifter could be powerful. Can just hard cast it here. I guess I don't really want to attack with the Quaddle to discourage the Arcanists from attacking in case they like find a discard spell instead of a removal spell. Eh, I think I like Moldrifting here. Alright, path is useful. Could see a Colagans command end of turn. And yep, kills Moldrifter and makes me discard. I'll discard the lands. And of course I can't force since it's my turn and not the opponent's turn. So Bolt takes out the Quaddle. And now the Arcanist can get back Bolts. Although there's no great target for the Bolt. Unearth cycled. No creature in the graveyard to get back with the Unearth. And a second Arcanists. Sure. Alright, so now what? Spoon's got one mana up. I can hard cast a force as well and play my Soul Herder. I guess that's reasonable. So they do have the bolt. Basically, if I force here, the bolt gets exiled, so they also can get it back with the Arcanist. They will be able to get back the bolt that's currently in the graveyard. Yeah, that's probably still fine. Just get one card here from my Wall of Blossoms. And dig a bit deeper. Ooh, Smiting Helix. Fair enough. The Soul Herder was going to die to the bolt regardless. And I guess I get to block to prevent one damage. So we're not under a ton of pressure, and our late game is pretty powerful, so don't hit our spot. Now I could play Soul Herder and have Venser up to counter a spell here, but I guess it would return it to its owner's hands. So yeah, I don't think we want to do that. So I guess I'll just play my wall for now and wait on the Soul Herder. There's always the risk of discard spells off the top, but I kind of want to deal with the creatures here first. Now Ephemerate's interesting, because that can save my Soul Herder from removal. Alright, I guess now I'm down. I guess I'll fetch first. And it's gonna be Smiting Helix flashed back. I'm gonna want to get rid of these Arcanists anyway. Could potentially draw into a force. So 
So the Soul Herder grows up to a 4-4. They get to attack, get back bolts, and finish off my Soul Herder. But I'll have drawn a few extra cards in the meantime. So I think we'll be fine. Alright, perfect. Start with an Oracle. Find a Witness. It's gonna be quite good. I guess I just path and keep up uh, Venser. Play it safe. Don't need to path right now. Although I'm not sure what I'm going to Venser, if anything. Like if they play a discard spell and I Venser it, they can just replay it right away. Alright, our opponent packs it in. So, against Mardu, Dreadhorde, mid-range, how do we want a sideboard? Thraktusk seems okay, Purge seems reasonable, although they probably have Lingering Souls 2 in there. So it's just for the Arcanist, not sure if they have maybe like the Pyromancer, which we can also exile, which I guess is not the worst. Don't think I want Rest in Peace, like it can be okay, but it also nerfs my Witness. What don't I like? I guess Deputy is not great. Time Warp's probably not necessary. Time Warp is more against like the combo decks where we need to close out the game quickly. This is more a grindy matchup. And Force, while theoretically not amazing against discard heavy decks, as in the Junt matchup, I don't hate having access to it. To maybe protect the creature in response to like Ephemerates in the opponent's turn. And the fact that it exiles Lingering Souls is also pretty relevant, so I still like having all four, I think. Alright, uh, yeah, the sand seems fine. Turn to Quaddle, turn three Witness, go to Force just in case. Inquisition, not gonna force that, they can take my Quaddle or my Witness. Takes the Witness. Untap Godless Shrine and Stoneforge Mystic, makes sense. I guess I could have considered Stony Silence for the Mystic, but even then, can still put Batter Skull in play, so finds Batter Skull. I guess I'll untap for now. Soul Herder. Yeah, maybe after seeing Mystic, there's some sideboard cards worth reconsidering. Like uh, Knight of Autumn as well. Alright, Path could be useful. So I don't think I play Soul Herder just because if they then kill my Quaddle, I'm left with nothing and I can't force. So I'll just hit for one, and then probably play Wall, keep a path and Ephemerates. Get my Prairie Stream. I want to have access to the white mana before fetching, in case they did have removal they wanted to use. If I hit a land drop, I could make the sweet Moldrifter plus Ephemerate play next turn, although a bit sketchy in the face of removal. So there's a Batter Skull. I could path it in the opponent's turn. Can also just take a hit. Can block and then uh, Ephemerates, which would be bad if they have a Fatal Push. But then I can always force. Yeah, I guess I'll go for it. Alright, that works. So opponent doesn't gain any life. Purge can exile the Germ token. Alright, so I do have land 4. But I don't want to do the Moldrifter shenanigans in the face of 3 open mana when we can't force in our own turn. Let's hit for 1. And then the second Quaddle is going to have Death Touch if they don't kill the first one. Just going to pass a turn here. Another artifact to put in play with the Mystic. It's going to be Sword of Fire and Ice, so I can block with the Quaddle. I could again block with the Wall and then Ephemerates. It's probably better than purging. Can always purge later. Sure. And I've got hard cast force at the ready. And do I pass the germ right now? Put a stock on three lands, I don't want to give them extra mana. Yeah, I'll just untap for now, I think. Eternal Witness is great. Alright, so we've got a wealth of options. I guess Witness get back Ephemerate is pretty strong. They're gonna bolt 
the witness in response. Sure, I'll let that happen. Could have also gotten back the first witness in case this happened, but we've got plenty of uh, card advantage to work with. Three mana for Seasoned Pyromancer. Yep, can't uh, do much about it. This card's Lingering Souls and Arcanists. Makes two tokens. Germ attacks. Maybe I should just purge it here. Ooh, Jace is nice. Probably want to Fate Seal once before I start brainstorming to get it out of bolt range. Yeah, they can keep a Marsh Flats. And then I'll keep the Quaddles on defense for now. Inquisition. Could take away my Force of Negation or my Path. So do I just force it myself? Yeah, it's probably fine. Because I need to keep the Path for whatever creature they decide to equip, if they do decide to equip something. And it's going to be Unearthed on the Arcanist, that's fine. And flashback Lingering Souls. So do I keep Path in hand in case of any equipped creatures? I think so. And then just cast the Ephemerate right now. Give up on the Moldrifter Dream here. Yeah, this is probably fine. Find another Path. Alright, there's some lands, so now I can start brainstorming, put back some lands. Alright. Equips the Arcanists, that's fine, I'm gonna end up pathing it anyway, but... No reason to do it now. And our opponent concedes just too much value from all our Enter Battlefield triggers, or Jace. And yeah, kind of crushes mid-range decks like Jund and Mardu once we get our engines going. Sweet, so that's gonna do it for me today. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.